afternoon. Welcome to the virtual press conference of the much-awaited sequel of The View and HBO Asia's original series, The Bridge 2. My name is MJ Felipe. I'll be your host for this afternoon. And you know what? For the past few weeks, fans around the world have been binge-watching the first season to refresh their memory of some important scenes. Also, to make theories about how the first will connect with the second season. And what we just showed you just a few seconds ago was uh, some of the highlights of the first episode of season two. Now, I, I saw the episode last Monday. It was great. And we can't wait to uh, share some of the things that's in store for you with the rest of the cast. Now, what makes this special for us is, of course, one of our very own star magic artists, Joseph Marco, is part of the sequel. Now, I'm excited to talk to the cast and to the people responsible for the, in this international collaboration with The Bridge 2. And before I call them in, I'd like to acknowledge first our friends from the press, our uh, bloggers and press people. Hi, magandang hapon. Good afternoon sa inyong lahat who are with us today. Thank you so much for your time. And don't forget, for all your social media uploads, our hashtag for this afternoon is hashtag the bridge to PH PressCon. Yan. Hashtag the bridge to PH PressCon. Now, we all got to watch the first episode last Monday, including me, and I think it's going to be a uh, Monday habit already. View and HBO Asia will be releasing an episode every Monday at 9 p.m. You can also catch up on an episode if you miss any, but best to watch it every Monday night at, again at 9 p.m. All right. Not to wait anymore, let's get this show on the road. And joining us on our virtual press con for this afternoon, first of all, we have with us the executive producer of The Bridge 2 and the person responsible for this beautiful collaboration with ABS-CBN International Production. Please welcome Miss Min Lim. Hi, Min. Hi, hi, MJ. How are you? Good. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right. I can't wait to throw in some questions. Uh, the backstage uh, stories are fun. I can't wait for everybody to join us right over here. And now also joining us is the head of ABS-CBN International Production and Co-Production, our very own, Direct Roel S. Bayani. Hi, Direct. Hello. Good afternoon, MJ. Good afternoon, everyone. Magandang hapon. Thank you so much for joining us, Direct. Now, we're also lucky to have four members of the cast joining us. I learned that uh, they came from different parts of Southeast Asia. Now, let's first call in our very own from the Philippines, a new addition to the bridge, playing the role of Christian Salvador. Please welcome Joseph Marco. Hi, Joseph. Hello, MJ. Hi, Min. Hi, Derek Ruella. Hello, everybody. So it's, it's good to be here. We're very happy that you're part of this exciting collaboration, Joseph. Now, like his character, Eri Salim from ICD Jakarta, this multi-awarded actor comes from Indonesia. Another addition to the season, please welcome Ario Bayu. Hi, Ario. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good to be here. Hey, All the way from Paris, France. <laughs> yes. Bonjour, Ario. Bonjour. <laughs> and now the dynamic duo from the bridge season one is back from singapore and malaysia respectively they'll definitely keep us on the edge of our seats again playing the role of serena teo we have with us rebecca lim magandang hapon everybody kamusta po kayo ako po si rebecca lim from singapore hi <laughs> I love you already, Rebecca. <laughs> that Filipino greeting already. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And now reprising his role as Mega Jamil. Let's call in Ron Palari. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Ron, did I pronounce your last name right? Palari, yeah, that's correct. Very well, Palari. There you have it. The cast and the... Uh, the wonderful lady behind The Bridge Season 2. And uh, it's my pleasure to talk about this season, which was just released two days ago. Now, let's start the question and answer. Now that we've seen Episode 1, what can you say about the reaction? Have you 
have you have you received feedback from those who've seen the first episode? Anybody? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Uh, go ahead. I think I was the most nervous. I think out of the lot, I'm, I'm the one who's the most nervous about the show, uh, just because I've seen it through its entire creative process. Right? I think we started working on this about kind of June, July last year, so it's been a year, a, a full year for us. Um, but you know, episode one hit on Monday, and and I think the response has been really great. I think everybody's like, "Oh my God!" I mean, of course, the first reaction: "What's happened to Maga?" Right? No, oh my God, no. Um, uh, but largely, you know, everybody's like, wow, it's really intense and they can't wait for episode two, which is a great kind of validation for us because we put a lot of hard work into the series. I can imagine the pressure in your parts, like giving birth to a baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never done that one, but this I can imagine might be just as hard or maybe worse. <laughs> Uh, well, I want to hear from the cast, uh, your reaction from the feedback from episode one. Are you? You know what? Uh, this is quite bad, but unfortunately, I've not seen episode one yet. <laughs> but I will tonight, most definitely. But, um, you know, I can only say from, um, from reading episode one, it is crazily intriguing. So I hope it resonates as well uh, with the audiences uh, after watching episode one. Becca. Well, there have been many people who have left very kind messages on social media um, saying how much they enjoyed episode one. So just want to say thank you for that. And a good sign will be because my brother, he doesn't watch any of my dramas, but for Rich, he enjoyed season one thoroughly. And after watching the first episode of season two, he actually asked if he could watch the second episode. So I guess that's a good sign, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Ron. Oh... Uh... Well, I've been cursed by some of my fans, like, you know, why, what happened, why, why, you know, what's... And, and I think it's a good sign as well, and, and it also means that uh, they need to see, to watch more episodes to understand the whole arc and everything, and, and this whole roller coaster, right? So it sets a nice go for everyone. Right, right. Uh, like I told you guys backstage, it's a breath of, breath of fresh air for me because I've been watching a lot of, like, let's say, Korean drama or Japanese drama. Now I see Southeast Asian actors, so <sighs> it's a breath of fresh air for my Monday nights. Joseph, when will we see you? I didn't see you in episode um, one. Soon, soon. Um, they should go. <laughs> so, yeah, soon. And I'm I'm I've been reading good comments and, uh, you know, on Instagram and Twitter, and it's very rewarding, you know, that people appreciate all the hard work that, you know, everybody put into this project. Right. It's awesome. Now, for, for those who are bumping into this project for the very first time, like hearing your names, your characters, or the story, or even the title of the show, can you share with us first your roles in the movie, uh, in the series, and what is this all about? I think I start with Min. Min, what is the show about? And then the rest can talk about their characters. Okay, so um, the show is a little bit of a continuation from season one. I think there are certain themes, especially with the characters, with uh, the Magat character and the Serena character, that you see um, an evolution um, of their characters in season two. Uh, but really, season two begins with a murder, like actually very much like season one. Um, and, and always with, with the bridge, is all about tying the countries together or having one murder. One murder that ties the countries together. In this and in this season, we needed to tie three floating, um, uh, you know, floating aimlessly in the Straits of Johor off the coast of Malaysia. And on board, they find a dead Indonesian family. And so, yeah, that's literally how we tie it all together. And you know, ICD, which is the International Crim um, Crimes Division, um, it comes in, gets brought in to investigate, and that's led by Rebecca's character, Serena Teo. And slowly, everything kind of you know, falls into place and it gets brought together. Yeah. Let, let us hear the members of the ICD. Becca? 
Uh, well, I play Serena Teo, Officer Serena Teo in The Bridge. Um, in short, she's just this very super high IQ but super low EQ detective. And <laughs> very no-nonsense, there's no games with Serena. And um, in season two, she goes through a, a really immense roller coaster, right? So you really do have to watch to, to find out why. Wow. So trying to balance now the IQ and the EQ on this season, huh? Trying very hard. <laughs> Run. Uh, I played uh, Maga Jamil. It used to be Officer Maga Jamil in season one, but in season two, uh, let's forget about the officer part of it. Uh, the story set a year after where season one ended. So uh, the whole journey in season one took, uh, completely changed uh, Maga. And uh, he used to have a high EQ and low IQ. Q, I think now is pretty much low on both sides, <laughs> and and yeah, so so it's 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 kind of like the first time that that uh, we 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 have to operate on a different you know uh, on on going separately, uh, Maga Jamil and also Officer Officer Serena Teo. All right, are you? Yes, with myself, I play um, Lieutenant Herianto Salim from the Jakarta ICD. Well, he's the kind of officer, you know, who is um, very methodical, a great uh, inspector, and uh, somewhat black and white. But then, uh, as you if you guys have seen from the first episode, there is an event that literally turned uh, his world upside down, and and eventually we see Harry uh, slowly into you know for him to find the truth, he has to you know be slightly rogue in, right. in some cases. So it's yeah. Is that great contrast with Harry? Interesting. Joseph, how about you? What's your role in this season? So I played the role of um, Christian Salvador. Uh, he's a Singaporean of Filipino descent who's heading an environmental NGO. And he's into girls who has low EQ. So. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting description, Joseph. <laughs> girls with low EQ. <laughs> Later on, let's try to elaborate on that. But, Min, I want to know, is the sequel part of the original plan when you did first season? No, I mean, look, season season one took us took me um, and Chirin in particular uh, two years to get off the ground, you know? Um, we, we pitched it for, for two years, we worked on it for two years, and it just, no one would, would commission it. And finally, you know, you came along and they said, you know, we'll do it. So we were delighted to just get season one, let alone season two. You know, right. so when we did season one, we were like, okay, let's just get, get this done. And we did it in actually a really short amount of time. And we could do that because we've been working on it for so long. Um, so when we, when we did season one and it hit in such a big way and it, it, it was so popular. I mean, when we got season two, we were just over the moon, you yeah. know, over the moon. especially since actually... The story for season one draw and season two dropped during season one. Like it happened while we were on production, and and I tell the story all the time that Churn was in the production van with Rebecca, um, and suddenly he went, "Oh my god, I've got it! I've got I've got season two. Right? So he takes out his laptop and he starts typing away, typing, 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 and he basically in, in just in this very long um, van ride back from a location, and then he takes the laptop, he hands it to to Beth. <laughs> And apparently, the only thing she did was. We <gasps> had <laughs> so when we season two rolled around, we're like, "That's the story we got to do." Right, and fast forward to today. Here we are promoting it on our way to the second episode next week, and there's no better time to promote like Southeast Asian projects like this one than today, right? So hooray for. for sure. all of it. Now, I'd love to uh, introduce to you some of our members of the press here in the Philippines, some of our entertainment bloggers and uh, reporters. Let's call in first for uh, her question, Josephine Bonsol of jobonsol.net. Hi. Hello. How are you guys? Hi, hi Jen. Hey, how you doing? Hello. My question goes out to each one of you. Some of you I have met already. Um, how 
does the series now adapt to the Asian market, especially the Filipino? Mm -hmm. um, it can answer. Uh, I guess I'll t I guess I'll take that one. Um, I think we set out to make a show. We set out to make a show that felt very authentic for Asians, uh, but still had universal values at the same time. I think, and and I think we've done that in the characters and in the story. You know, um, especially you know, season one was an adaptation of an of an existing format, um, and we worked very hard to make it relevant uh, for a local audience. Um, and so we hope we we took the exact same approach. Um, with season two, um, and so we think that it's not just relevant for our markets, but it's relevant across the whole of Southeast Asia. And my question also is for Joseph Marco: is how is his role contributing to the show being a Filipino, and how relevant is a Filipino character in your series? Oh, I think so. Uh, Joe, do you want to go? Do you want to take that? Go ahead, go ahead, man. Okay, I'll, I'll go from producer's standpoint because I think that's where we started out. So we originally started out wanting to make the show because The Bridge has always been a show about about two two markets, and this is really the first time we've expanded it to the third country. So when we first started out, we actually weren't even thinking about a fourth country um, at that time. Um, but then, you know, TJ, uh, who is is the is one of the executive producers as well, and he's also the lead director on the show. TJ came up with the idea of having um, a Filipino character, um, and I thought it was a great idea. You know, it was it was a way to introduce another part of Southeast Asia into the show. So we did that, and then you know we were actually just going to cast someone a Filipino living in Malaysia at the time because production is was happening mostly in Malaysia. Um, and then Ruel and I uh, were having dinner one night talking about some other projects. And we have a, at Double Vision have a very long-standing relationship with ABS-CBN, having produced uh, Kahit Isan Saglit from years back with Carmen Su and Jericho Rosales. Um, so, you know, we were talking about it and Ruel's like, why don't you just cast someone from the Philippines? You know, we can help you with that. And I was like, great. And the rest is history. And I think, you know, we really didn't know what 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 a Filipino actor would bring. To, to, to we really had no expectations, but Joseph has blown all our expectations out of the water. I mean, he came in and he really brought something to the role, an edge that we never expected. Actually, when we were writing the character, and Kieran, our head writer, will say exactly the same thing. You know, the chemistry that he brought with Rebecca, never having worked together. I think they shot their first scene the day after they met for the first time, you know, um, and, and he really, really delivered. So I'm super grateful that we managed to get him on the show. My last question would be, what are the limits of this virtual setup now, promoting the, movie, the series compared to your previous experiences for you? For me? Okay, um, I, I think... <laughs> It's great, actually, like, that we can still do this. You know, in the time of modern technology, you can still get together and do this despite not being able to travel. I mean, in Malaysia, we, as of now, we're not allowed out of the country till the 31st of August, right? So if we didn't have this kind of setup, we wouldn't be able to promote the show. Of course, we would love to get together. I don't think the cast has been able to get together since um, we were in production. And even then, you know, we didn't actually for this season manage to have a proper rap party with everybody together. So it would have been nice if, if, if we could have done this in person um, and, and have a reunion, so to speak. But, you know, it's nice that we get to do it anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, uh, Mommy Jo. Let's call in now. Bernard Santos of My Movie World. Hello, guys. Hi, Bernard. Hello. Congratulations to the new season of The Bridge. Um, my first question um, to Marco, um, what made you decide to, to accept their pull uh, for the second season of Bridge? And then for the rest of the cast, um, what made you decide as well to continue to be part of the new season of Bridge? 
Uh, yeah, um, who, who, would, who wouldn't want to be part of this award-winning crime thriller, you know? And um, it's such a big thing for us, you know, like actors. To, to get like an international gig so that is so you know i was i was blown away and I, I was so excited and um yeah after after watching the trailer of the the first season um because i'm such a fan of psychological psychological thriller films so yeah i got super excited and super thankful that i i was able to be part of this how about the other as of the cast <laughs> Uh, well, we are very fortunate to, to have uh, Joseph uh, also with Bayou to be part of our family, our extended family this season. Uh, I think the conversation between us, the, the nucleus of the, the family from the first season is how to make it better. And I think both of them really brought their A game to the table and pushed the, 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 the project to the next level. And I can't say thank you enough for two of them. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think being part of season one, I was very proud to be in the first season of Bridge. And I can honestly say that after working on the second season, it is even better than the first season, if I may say. Um, not only just storyline, but um, every character is extremely well written. Um, there's so many plot twists, and at the end of every episode, there's such a, such a strong cliffhanger that makes you just want to watch the next episode and um, I think the chemistry this time around has been has been great so far um, in season one with Bond it was it was fabulous and in the second season I'm very fortunate to have three like wonderful male co-stars you know Bond, Joseph and Ario and and with each of them I have very different chemistry so it was really great and hopefully the audience will like it as well. Um, yes, but uh, with me, I guess uh, I'm uh, in the same boat with Joseph. Uh, this is my, um, I guess, uh, second season was uh, the very first time that I joined uh, for The Bridge 2. And I guess, like Bronte and Rebecca has mentioned, um, it, was, it was a cohesive kind of mold, so to speak. I mean, at the end of the day, it was a great script. Um, Chiron did a great job. And um, yeah, from the get-go, uh, for me, it was like... Um, was amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my follow-up question is um, for all of you: um, What are the preparations or some challenges that you experienced while uh, shooting the new season of the pitch? Rod, you should go first. Challenges. <laughs> uh, just try to stay healthy and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I injured myself on, on set uh, during the first season. Uh, so on second season, I try not to, like, you know, uh, ruin the schedule uh, <laughs> any worse than the first season. And uh, daily on set, I try to practice a healthy dose of sleep and nap. So I think that's, that's a good practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, for myself, this role is extremely challenging both physically and emotionally. And also Serena as a character is very different from who Rebecca is. But one thing that really helped me get into character, I must say, is actually the the makeup. Because they made me a little more rugged. They added like some blemishes and freckles on my face just to make me look um, more... Out there, you know, more like a we had to unpretty fire Rebe Rebecca. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think that also helped, and everything from makeup to wardrobe to the script and everything really just helps an actor. And also, we had three very good directors on set as well TJ, we had Jason, we had Zahia. So, three wonderful directors and, and, and great cast. Oh, and for me, I guess um, I was the opposite of Rebecca. I had to be prettified. So that was um, quite a challenging um, period of the shoot. So every day that uh, put me in makeup. The most enough, magic went went enough Mario, exactly. Front. Majority of the budget was absorbed by me. I do apologize. But yeah, I think that was one of the challenges. How about you, uh, 
Joseph. Yeah. 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 For me, I think it's more of like the scheduling because uh, if I remember, that was remember I was doing like three projects, and then I'm you know coming to Japan, I needed to fly to Kuala Lumpur, and then the second one that I went to Kuala Lumpur was that was New Year's Eve, and we all know that you know everybody's celebrating here, so I flew to Kuala Lumpur with no sleep. But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, it's such a blessing working on the first day of the year. So, yeah. Um, what do you think? Yeah. I guess for me, um, the challenge is, is, is more across the story in, in trying to make um, the characters feel authentic and feel, you know, and, and we were working in scripts with, in three languages, four languages sometimes. You know, we've got all kinds of Southeast Asian languages going through it. We've got English, we've got Malay, we've got Indonesian, we've got, you know, Joseph managed to get some Tagalog in there, um, and also some Chinese. So just making sure that there was a nice balance um, um, in, in, in the story, um, and also making sure that each of these characters in each of these countries felt authentic to that particular country. You know, so that was really, really important, and so I hope that we've uh, achieved that. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, I forgot to mention Min a while ago that I couldn't agree with you more because when I saw the first episode of season two, the feel wasn't alienating. It was very familiar. It was the, 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 the location, even the outfits. It's not alienating at all. It's very Asian, it's very us. It's very inclusive, very us. Yeah, that's, that was the point. Yeah, so I'm glad I'm glad you felt that. And I can tell from the private jokes of Braun and Ario, uh, there's a lot of stories behind the scenes that we can't wait <laughs> to hear more in this conversation. Let me just call in Charlie Barredo of Star Studio to join in and ask some questions. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, Charlie, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. Um, Joseph, so how did you feel when you found out that you got this project? Uh, like I said, I was I was very excited. You know, uh, actually, it, it, it took a while for for me to to process that I'm gonna be part of this. So after seeing the the, the episode of the actually the the trailer of the first season, I was so. And yeah, like I said, uh, I'm such a fan of psychological thriller films. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I'm excited. Something, something yeah, like sure. mm -hmm. So, can you tell us more about your character, Christian Salvador? Like his background, how he is as a person, without no one revealing too much of uh, what, what, what can I say more about my character besides um, being an environmentalist? I would say uh, he loves to cook, and he's he's not into gory stuff. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so I uh, thank you very much, Joseph. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. The wonders of technology. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. You know, just a bit of a trivia. Joseph here in the Philippines is a heartthrob. Oh, no, we know. Yeah. <laughs> even, even, on set, even, even on our set. Even on our set. This is a breath of fresh air also for us, seeing Joseph do an action, an investigative kind of thriller kind of a project. It's very different, new for us, seeing Joseph do that kind <laughs> of... Uh, form you know um let what me kind call of joseph are you guys uh familiar with like mind sharing with us a bit yeah true yeah. actually <laughs> i don't talk too much about his form huh? joseph's yeah. threat to reveal uh, some of it <laughs> let me call in now justin puts a lot of pep to jump right in before i go any further with some of the revelations Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
question is for um, Direct Ruel. Um, how did the partnership with Double Vision push through with the bridge? Well, uh, just to, hello, Justin. Just to clarify, um, this is not a partnership for the bridge. This is really a men's project. We were mm -hmm. actually, in fact, we were working uh, on discussing, exploring a different project. And we were in Singapore when we had a dinner in one of our functions in uh, she told me about a Filipino character that was written in for uh, written in for season two, and then uh, Smin said uh, they were supposed to cast someone from uh, Malaysia, and I said why? I uh, why not cast one of our actors? I can send you anyone you want, and um, I said I'll send you a, a list and the reels, and then I hope you like. Um, uh, you can choose uh, who you think will suit the character and then exactly how it happened. It started with uh, a longer list and it became five, then it became three, and then it became two. And then the final choice was Joseph. And Joseph, um, at the time, was supposed to fly to Japan for a movie for Regal. And um, the original schedule was going to be in conflict uh, for the for the scheduled shoot. So um, we were working back and forth, and then finally it was all worked out. And then he came back from Japan the day after. I think he flew to Kuala Lumpur and um, filmed for the project. So we're very we're extremely proud of. Um, being part of this landmark project. Um, I, I, I'm i sure not all of you know that what a big deal it is for for the Asian content industry for something like this, uh, that uh, Double Vision, the family of me and me and ourselves uh, pioneered. Um, a show like Bridge is watched, uh, consumed in almost like 30 markets all over the world. So it is a true showcase of uh, plantation talent. And right now on screen, you have great actors from from uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines. Uh, it's to me, it's almost like a dream project. And then you will see more of these kinds of projects in the future. So thank you. I saw the first episode last Monday. Congratulations. Thank wow. you so much. And honestly, thank you, Ruel, for making this happen on the, you know, ABS side. We are so grateful, you know. I mean, you are one of the people that we started our, our international um, regional co-productions with, you know, going back all the way to Kahit Isan Saglit, which ended up actually having, being nominated for an international Emmy, right? So thank you so much for the support. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome and you're free to shoot season three in the Philippines and cast more Filipino ah, actors who can film in Palawan and Boracay. Yeah. You're yeah. most welcome. We can, Look at how we happy can, you I'm sure Joseph will be so thrilled to show you around. Yes, yeah. my gosh, I love Philippines. Yes. Let's make it happen. Thank you, Justin, for the question. <laughs> So I have another question, direct. Um, yes. How was Joseph chosen as part of the show? Yes. Did um, yeah, I answered that a while ago. The thing was, uh, it was really the decision of the of Ming's team to choose from among the from among among the options. We sent them the reels of the actors at the time. I had a very good reel of Joseph because he just came from. Uh, I think both Los Bastardos and Wildflower, and he was, I, they chose him because um, he was the right fit for the character, and which is usually how it is with casting. It's not, it's not who's popular or who's, um, a very, it's who's perfect uh, for a particular character, and how it will blend with the rest of the cast. And as we all know, uh, the cast already has a built-in chemistry because they came up from a very successful season one, which won them an award, uh, which won them, um, right, Min? What did you, what did you win again? It was for was the Malaysian Academy? Yes, so we were, not, we were Malaysia's entry into uh, 
um, yes. the Asian Academy of Creative Awards for you Best Drama. You were the National Drama. winner for... Yes, we were the National yes. winner. Yes. <laughs> correct. Yeah, Best Drama and Best Adaptation of an Existing Format. Correct, correct. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Justin. Derek, it's so exciting to hear that we're just beginning this beautiful collaboration with Min's team and with ABS-CBN. Looking and forward Yes, and it's also the reason why I wanted the Filipinos to know more about Braun and Rebecca and Ario because um, it's a different world out there. You, uh, you will see them, you will most likely see them not just in international series, but maybe in movies here in the Philippines, or you, you'll never know. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a whole um, world of possibilities. And if I'm not mistaken, brought it to do a movie for us. Were yes, you uh, in uh, Motel La Casa? Motel La Casa. Wow. So, um, that's what I mean. Um, we're all content creators, we're all artists, we're all um, leaders of sorts in the, in the region. We're all working hard together. Um, we need teamwork to succeed and uh, we're just very fortunate to have a, a like-minded partner in Min and uh, her company. Yeah! We can't wait to see Aryo and Becca be part of our movies and TV series too here in Manila. Yes! Right, let's call now John Bueno for the next question. Hi, John! Hey, John. Miss John. Hi, John. <laughs> Joseph on the spot. Um, you know, you ask if, uh, do you feel Filipinos actually are at par um, acting wise with the rest of our Asia neighbors? Um, I would say yes, but for me, it doesn't really matter where you came from. Um, do you need talent? Yes, but it all comes down to how bad you want it. You know how how passionate you are with what you do, and you know you're you're gonna plant automatically. You know, you're very passionate with your craft. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Min, uh, may I ask you, um, how important was it to actually have representation? Like, you know, people coming from Indonesia, from Malaysia, and of course the Philippines. How important oh, was that? I think it was, it, was really, it was really important for us because I think it was very important for us that these characters really felt authentic. So we didn't want to, for example, have an Indonesian play a Malaysian or vice versa. We wanted, you know, these people to feel really real. So it was important. And also we felt that, you know, given the success of season one, season two would be a great uh, platform to showcase the acting talent, um, not just actually on screen, but also off screen, right? But the, to act, the, the mostly like the, it, what you see is the talent on screen. Uh, but the acting talent from around the region, we know we've got great actors. We, we know that without a doubt. But it's not like, I think we're always saying, it's not often that you get to see them all on the same show, right? Or the fact that, you know, some people are really big in, in Indonesia, but they might not be known in the Philippines or Philippines and Malaysia. And I think this was a great chance for audiences across the region to get to know the talent from the region. So that was really important for us. All right. Um, do you think this is just one of the things that you're going to do and uh, you're going to do more in the future? Oh, I would love to do more. I would love to do more. I think the caliber of talent that we were able to get on the bridge, I am so grateful for. And I would love to do it in a way because 